Golf Swing Biomechanics. Biomechanics can be thought of as the engine that drives what you see as a superficial technique of a golf swing. Biomechanics is, is more related to how the body works and how the body produces motion and what we call movement pattern than it is the technique, the superficial technique in, in, um, uh, of striking the ball. So biomechanics are really the engine that drives how you move. On top of that engine, you can then place your superficial mechanics, your grip posture, setup kind of stuff, positioning of the club head and the face of the uh, club on the ball. Biomechanics is where you're going to drive your power, is where you're going to drive your overall movement pattern. The more efficient, the more powerful, and the more consistent your ball striking will be. The more you're able to uh, create compression on the ball, shape shots, and be consistent with your ball striking. In order to understand biomechanics, there's three basic areas um, that I would like to cover very briefly. If you think of your lower body as your foundation, your lower body, your foundation to the ground, how you grip the ground, how you push and pull against the ground to create speed. Everything generates from the ground up. It's how you push and pull, how you interact with the ground that allows you to create movement, allows you, allows you to create speed. So the golf swing can be broken into three main areas. The foundation, the power generation, the horsepower, if you will. The transition from raw horsepower hour into speed, okay, and that's basically in the in the core. The, so you have speed and you have control of that speed, okay. That's where we move, start moving diagonally through the core. And the last action is more of the amplification of the speed from the arms to the club. So the transference of that speed that was generated here, that horsepower is generated here, transferred into speed or created in, uh, or turned into rotational speed here, and now being amplified and released into the club shaft. So the three areas are your lower body, your core, your torso, and your arms in the club. Okay? We're going to talk a little bit about uh, movement patterns that are crucial to good foundational lower body mechanics, good core transfer mechanics, and good club to arm mechanics. These are basic movement patterns that can be used as exercises and also as a better understanding of what you should be feeling in your golf swing. <clears throat> Press forward. Press forward is learning how to push against the ground, shift weight, or press to create linear momentum forward without uh, tipping or sliding or, or losing your core, your foundation, your lower body foundation, or your core stability. It's a simple exercise, but it's the foundation of virtually everything that we do. It's a very simple exercise. We get our, our feet about shoulders width apart. We're going to pull our front leg forward about an inch or two, just a little bit of a, a closed stance. And rather than being uh, neutral, let's say this would be zero, we're going to open our foot to about 30 degrees. Okay, just shy of 45 degrees, roughly around that, that area is just fine. We're going to point to our belt buckle and point to, point to our sternum. And from a neutral position, starting position, we're going to press forward and turn onto the front side, releasing on the rear side. You can see my rear foot release. The idea is we don't want to tip this way, we don't want to tip this way, we don't want to create separation at this point. All we want to do is from our start position, press forward. The idea is we don't want too much lateral and we don't want too much rotation. We want a soft front side, maintaining some flexion in the knee and the hip. We want to move the weight from the ball of our foot to the ball of our foot. Ball of the foot to ball of the foot is important. We're going to press and turn at the same time. Okay? I'll do five reps in a row. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? From this position, or from a, uh, the different perspective, again, neutral stance, bring it forward, open the front foot, athletic posture, one, two, so we're not sliding this direction, we're pushing this direction, and we're not spinning this direction, the hip dropping back. Again, one, two, three, Four. Okay? Simple exercise, press forward. This is our core separation drill with the ball between our legs. 
We're using a uh, 55 centimeter. You could go as small as 45 centimeter. Anything too much bigger than 55 is probably going to be too big. The ball is slightly deflated, goes between our knees, and this allows us to grip into the ground, to isolate our lower body without completely taking it away. We're gripping the ground, we're in a soft athletic position, knees and hip flexion. We're going to isolate the lower body, create a separation at the torso. Separate, back to neutral. Separate, back to neutral. Separate, back to neutral. The idea or the key to this is that we're not just twisting our upper body, we're actually separating across. We want to feel pull all the way down into our pelvis. We want to really feel like we're gripping the ground. We may also feel almost like a little counter torque with the lower body almost going the opposite direction a little bit. The idea here is not how much separation we get. We're not, not worried about how much separation we get here. We're only worried about separating as our shoulders are perpendicular to our spine, not reaching this direction or tipping this direction, okay? We don't want to reach and turn this way, okay? We just want to separate with our shoulders perpendicular to our spine, creating a pull down across our, our uh, core, diagonally down to this, you want to feel connection here, gripping the ground and uh, uh, kind of hollowing the stomach, creating a, 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 a stable core, and then back to neutral, contracting from here, not up through our upper shoulders, okay? A couple more quick reps. One, two, three, four. Basic separation or torso separation with the ball between our legs with a Swiss ball, creating a stable foundation, isolating the lower body for movement. This variation of the left arm swing, right arm push, isolates the lower body but adds an impact in. We'll isolate the lower body with the ball between our legs. However, swing rather than swing above the bag, in this instance we're going to swing into the bag. So we're going to swing with our right and push right into the side, or into the bag with our right, arm, with our right side. We can add A little bit of a plyo into this, and, and advance it a little bit by swinging over the bag. Okay. Let's do one more. Again, this is one where we're not going to be swinging with all of our might. We want to protect the left elbow and the wrist. This isn't for speed output. It's more for technique at half. Speed at best, we want to watch the impact bag especially, we don't want to start developing uh, uh, lateral side epicondylitis or, or tendonitis from hitting the bag too hard, gripping it, you know, we got to really be careful with these one arm exercises, hitting balls or whatever, you don't want to start to develop tendonitis in the elbows and the wrists and even in the shoulder. These are mostly for technique and not done for speed or really for impact. 